In this demonstration, we are using the inside corner on parapet wall with cant strip. However, the same procedure would apply to an inside corner without the cant strip. Measure 4 inches out on the parapet wall, down the length, then 5 inches out on the base. Because sometimes you'll lose an inch or so with your inside pig's ear. Inside corners use one piece of flashing folded. Apply adhesive on both sides of the wall, deck, corner, and flashing. When the glue is tacky, pick the rubber up. Fold it in half, set it 5 inches from the wall, and roll one side up the wall. Go to the other side and work the strip into the corner by making a pig's ear. Peel off the paper. Glue the pig's ear and area it sticks to. When the glue is tacky, pull the pig's ear over and finish sticking that side of the wall. You may need to use a heat gun to ensure the top area folds easily. You may also need the heat gun to fill in all the areas where bridging may occur. Next, cover the pig's ear with a straight piece by measuring a 6 inch piece up the side and over the edge. Apply the glue. When the glue is tacky, roll the piece on up, making sure the flashing is tight over the pig's ear lap. Pull the paper off. The top corner of the parapet wall should also be flashed since the rubber covering the parapet misses that corner. The EPDM and flashing material should always extend two inches over the outside edge of the wall where it will be terminated. Use the steel roller to roll all the flashing. Use lap caulking to caulk all seams. This demonstration is with an outside corner on parapet wall with a cant strip, but the same procedure works on an outside corner without the cant. First measure two inches out on the parapet wall, down the length, then four inches out on the base. The flashing width should be 4 inches past the corner since all corners have to be double wrapped. Apply splice adhesive to the wall, deck, corner and flashing. While the glue is tacky, pick up the rubber flashing, fold it, set it, and roll it up the wall. Trim two inches off the corner with a curving cut. Work the side up to make a pig's ear. Glue the pig's ear flap down and since the corner has to be double wrapped, apply a second piece of flashing in the same manner as the first. When you are finished, check that all bridging is tight. Use lap caulking to caulk all seams. A pitch pocket must be built around any protrusion in the roof that can't be flashed or terminated. The minimum depth for a pitch pocket is 2 inches. Select the edge to start flashing on by inspecting the direction of the roof drain. The lap of the rubber should always flow with the water direction so water does not get caught under it. 
You want to start your flashing, therefore, on the bottom-most flap. Measure 4 inches past the flange on each side for a minimum lap. The length should measure at least 2 inches inside the pocket. Tack the edge and apply the adhesive. When the glue is tacky, roll the rubber to edge and then up the sides. Trim the sides around the corners using a curving cut to a 2 inch minimum width. Push the sides and top edge down. Do the other sides exactly the same way starting with the opposite side. Then do the other two sides. Roll all flashings and caulk. The finished pitch pocket should be filled with international pourable sealer. The roof drain or sump must be laid into the insulation. Place the rubber over your sump, then find the hole. Cut a hole in the rubber about the same size as a small downpipe. Find the sump's bolt holes. Take water cut off and run a heavy bead around the top of the sump ring. Push the rubber back down. Line the clamping ring up with the bolt holes. Dab water cut off in each bolt hole. Put the leaf catcher on and bolt it in. Do not seal the leaf catcher bolts. You may need to remove the catcher if the sump clogs. Termination bars should go on every loose edge of your rubber membrane. Generously apply water cutoff under the edge of the membrane or flashing. Fasten a termination bar over the ends of the flashing. Leave a one inch gap between the end of each termination bar to allow for expansion. Remember, you always want to draw the water away from the edge. Cut the excess rubber above the termination bar Add caulking on top of the bar and at the edge of the rubber. A fully adhered system requires the use of a perimeter base attachment to ensure maximum adhesion at the base of a parapet wall. Roll out the reinforced strip against the bottom of a parapet wall. Fasten with appropriate screws every six inches by using batten bar or two inch insulation discs at the base of a wall. Once secured, clean your field sheet and the reinforced strip with splice cleaner where the membranes will intersect. Apply international splice adhesive to the field sheet and to the reinforced strip where the membranes will meet. Allow glue to dry until tacky to the touch. Float the field sheet over the reinforced strip. Continue gluing up the rest of the wall using International's bonding adhesive. A perimeter base attachment with butyl tape laminate is also available. Secure the reinforced strip with either batten bar or two inch discs. Clean the field sheet with splice cleaner. Apply a thin layer of tape primer to field sheet and let dry. Peel the release paper off the reinforced strip and carefully float the field sheet over it. Glue up the rest of the parapet wall by using International's bonding adhesive. Whenever you work with adhesives, keep the containers covered as much as possible. The adhesive can evaporate or start to dry and become tacky when it is left open too long. 
It's important to keep all the materials warm during colder weather. Ideally, everything should be kept on site in a heated area. The easiest way to estimate how much product you will need is to have an international representative help you. Before installing the roofing system, check with International Diamond Systems to assure there are no addendums.